back, relax, maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hi guys, so I am here today to do a book review and the book that I'm going to be reviewing is Tigana, which is one of the books that we chose for our Buddy Reads group on Goodreads. I will put the link to that down below if you guys want to join. But this is a standalone and it's by Guy Gavril Kay. Didn't really know what to expect going into this. I'd heard a lot of good things about Guy Gavril Kay. I've heard a lot of good things about his writing, but I didn't know if it was going to be for me or not. The whole way through I was a little bit confused as to whether I was going to give it a 3, a 3.5, a 4. I wasn't sure what I wanted to give it. And the whole way through there were moments that were really good and there were moments that were a bit slow. So it was a little bit hit and miss for me. I definitely feel like it could have been a shorter book and it would have been a bit better if it was a shorter book, but equally I think there are some great things within this. So the whole way through I was thinking, oh, I'll probably give it a 3.5. 3.5 seems like it would it would do it justice. And then I got to the end and I was still thinking, yeah, 3.5 is probably decent. It's good, it's a little bit better than average, but it's not amazing or mind-blowing. And then at the very end of this book, there is an author afterward, which is only about three, four pages, and it's just written by Guy Gavril Kay. And he tells everyone his influences and what kind of intrigued him and what he wanted to put into this book and why he wanted to put it in. I loved that afterward because it brought everything in the book into kind of crystal reality for me and it made me think back over everything and think that his influences really shone through because he'd kind of made his intentions known to me in the afterward. The whole thing sort of flowed better and, and it all clicked together better in my mind. So I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars and I think it's definitely worth reading. I will definitely be reading more of Guy Gavril Kay's stuff in the future. This book definitely feels a lot more historical than fantasy. It's kind of marketed as a historical fantasy, although Guy Gavril Kay himself doesn't really like using that term. And there's a much bigger focus on world building than a lot of other fantasy books I've read which isn't a bad thing because this is set in a kind of Italian Renaissance period and it's very true to that. It definitely feels like a believable Italian Renaissance period. Italian Renaissance is something I'm very interested in. It's something I studied when I did History of Art and it's definitely something that I like personally. So learning a bit more about the world in that time was definitely interesting to me. And I liked seeing how the author kind of put his own spin onto that time period. The cast of characters are often my favourite part of a book, as you guys know, and we did have some interesting characters in this book, but none of them were particularly outstanding. There were characters who were interesting in terms of their story, but as people they were a little bit irritating at places. I wouldn't say any of them truly captivated me or gripped my attention, but they, they were intriguing and that's kind of enough to drive the story forward. The focus is largely on Devon, who is a young lad in a kind of travelling band of performers and he is very good at singing. He doesn't know a lot about the world, he's quite naive, and he doesn't really understand like the political intricacies that are going on behind the scenes. But he is a very inquisitive boy nonetheless and he likes getting into in trouble and kind of investigating things a little bit. He's a bit mischievous. He is quite a fun character, his impressions are often given to us and we often see from his point of view, which I enjoyed a lot because he certainly acts as the character who kind of blurs the lines and asks the questions for us, the audience. His point of view is interesting because it's kind of revealing a lot of things to us. Then we have Katriana, who is quite an interesting character in her own right, but she also annoyed me a lot because I didn't really like her, I didn't really like the way she treated the other characters or herself at times. She just wasn't the nicest character and that is all explained, like there are reasons she's not the most approachable, nice character but I still didn't love her as a character. She is another member of the travelling band that they're in. She's rather new, she's mysterious. At the beginning of the book we don't know a lot about her and Devin doesn't know a lot about her. And she definitely seems very, very hostile and that kind of continues throughout a lot of the book, which is why I didn't like her as much. Then we have Sandre and when the story begins we're kind of unsure about what's going to happen to his family because he has been exiled and he doesn't really rule anything anymore and his family has been away for a long time and no one really knows what's going on with his family or 
him. There's a lot of rumours flying around and as we open the book that's kind of the main focus. Then we have Alisan who is a quite strange character. He's very sad, he's got a very intense backstory. He's from a place that very few people know and a lot of people don't know it existed and there's a spell that's been cast that means that the name of this place can't even be said so he can't even justify or explain where he's from. So his backstory is quite mysterious. He is on a mission which is going to potentially change the fate of the whole land. Then we have Dianora, who is a young lady who has lived a life that she never thought she would have, never really envisioned for herself. She chose this life because she wanted to achieve something. She had a goal, she had a mission, she wanted to carry it through. But of course things got complicated, other stuff got in the way and her life is very much a kind of mess. Not really the way she wanted it to go when she first set out on the adventure. And as the story goes on we meet a lot more characters as well, some of whom are interesting, some of whom were a little bit dull. The story itself is set in a land which is ruled over by two tyrants. These tyrants are called Brandon of Ygrath and he is incredibly powerful. He took over the land of Tigana which is the namesake of the book and he has been suppressing the land and the citizens of Tigana for many generations. He's been extending his life with magic. Due to him the land of Tigana is no longer, no one knows it, no one can say the word Tigana, no one really understands anything about it unless they live there and when they have lived there they can't even explain it, they can't say anything about it because of a magical spell that has been cast over the land. Thus it means that all of the people who once knew Tigana as their home are forced to leave or be subjugated into obeying Brandon and it's quite a kind of rundown society. The other ruler is Alberico of Barbador and he is not a nice guy either really. He rules over Astabar, he's the one who exiled Sandre and he took over Sandre's homeland. He's probably actually the nastier of the two tyrants, I didn't like him at all. Although they're both horrible for what they do, he was definitely the nastier in my opinion and he was definitely portrayed as the bad guy. Each of the tyrants obviously hates one another, they're kind of bordering regions to one another and they don't like each other at all and because of their warring and constant bitterness to one another the people who live in their lands are kind of at war as well and there's a lot of distrust and sadness and it's just not a nice society to live in at this point and it definitely does hark back to kind of Renaissance Italy times. The story itself I thought was really interesting, it had some weird or slow moments in the middle that I just didn't get but mostly it was a very interesting premise. I like the idea that this town had been kind of wiped off the map and no one could even say what it was or anything and they were kind of on a mission to see what could be done about it. I thought that was a really good concept, it just wasn't executed as quickly as I would have liked it to be done. I think the beginning and the end were definitely the strongest parts, the beginning really hooked me and the ending was really explosive, the middle just had too many slow parts for my liking and I definitely felt like the magic was pretty badass in this, it was quite interesting what they could do with magic and the way that it interacted with people. Overall I definitely enjoyed the majority of this book but the slower sections in the middle did let it down a bit and I think I would have given it a 3.5 but it just edged up to a 4 because of the afterword. So I'm definitely interested to hear your thoughts if you have read this series or if you've read any other Gavril K books because I'm definitely planning to pick up more of his work. I do own a couple of his other books and I definitely want to see what they're like. I think this is one of his longest books. Most of the other ones I own are quite short compared so I'm thinking they might be a little bit more to my liking. But I would love to hear what you guys think. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars and please leave me your comments in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all very soon in another video. Bye!